Hey buddy, Thomas here. Today we're gonna do a video on the Kubota Sidekick. This is the RTV XG850. We have 382 miles on this thing. We bought this thing approximately two years ago and we absolutely do love it. I'm gonna to try to do this run this time without running into my fence and breaking a post because that's already happened. So <laughs> we have quite a bit of snow. There's about 14 to 18 inches of snow. Uh, it's drifted up all over the place and we've got a few trails so we're gonna take you for a ride on this thing and show you how she handles I've got her in low gear and in four-wheel drive so stay tuned and we've got the dogs with us which are gonna be absolutely wild on this run <laughs> steering one handed right now because I'm holding the camera in my other hand and it's kind of like driving a wet noodle sometimes on the snow and then trying not to hit trees and such really dogs they're a little bit tired and you can see the, the belly pan here has bottomed out it shows you how deep the snow is haha <laughs> they're turning they don't know we're going this way Oh, we are going through some heavy snow. All right, now slow down and make this turn so I don't hit a tree. There we go. Got a branch right here I'm gonna bottom out on. Yep, bottom out on that branch. It's kind of bumpy back here. This is the back side of our property. fingers in the way. I had to switch hands there for a second. Even in low gear, she's got some speed. The power steering is amazing in this because I'm doing this all one-handed. <laughs> going for a finish behind oh, the sawmill building without running over doggies and without hitting the sawmill building. <laughs> so there you have it. Not too shabby. And for the Now let's get out and walk around the machine. All right, folks, so there you have it. Dogs are tuckered out. Those cool wheel caps are actually snow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so again, lots of snow out here, but the machine does handle very well. Uh, one thing you gotta always watch out for, even in snowy conditions, is if you pack in the radiator with snow. Now I haven't cleaned this out since the run we just did. You can see there's snow at the bottom. Let's go ahead and open up this hood. And you can see, she is cleaned out down there. There's a little shield that's in front of the radiator, which is nice, which is, I think it's even removable. Maybe not, maybe it's just a shield right there. Anyways, you've got the shield there. There's actually no snow on the radiator. Sorry, the male guy's just driving by and the dogs will let me know. But even underneath here, if you dig it out, there is like a little uh, protective, piece of rubber there to prevent snow from getting really compacted in there. Also you see very little snow builds up anywhere in there. And we we're going pretty quick through there. Overall pretty happy the way that that keeps snow out. The little grill on the front does great. This grill down here is totally impacted with snow but uh, or compacted excuse me but uh, no issues. Underneath we do have you know, some snow built up in there, but nothing too major. I've been doing this for a couple of days now, and it actually cleans off pretty well. Back aft here, we've already opened that side. Let's open up this one. We'll look underneath the, the tail right here, and you can see 
everything stays pretty clean. I don't really have any issues with snow buildup on the engine. Now down below where the suspension's at and stuff, sure you have a little bit there, but it actually stays pretty snow free. Not too shabby, I like that. Again, we've had this for about two years. The only issue that we've actually had on this entire machine is one of the coil packs went out, which was uh, still under warranty. So just took it in there, they changed out the coil pack. And then also on the exhaust, when that coil pack went out, it was causing excessive fuel to get into the exhaust. So I have a new uh, tailpipe on there too. But yeah, that's the only issue we had. And again, it was covered under warranty. So no complaints there. We do use this to move around trailers quite often. It does a great job at that. Even with these regular tires right here, um, getting through the snow, no problem. Get out here, put her in two wheel drive and go absolutely crazy with it. But the machine itself, I've been very happy with it. Now we are up here in Wisconsin now. We bought this machine when we were down in Mississippi and we use it on our farms in Tennessee a whole lot too. The funny thing is, is we're out here driving this thing around like, you know, crazy people without a windshield. <laughs> but uh, it's not too bad, actually. Um, as long as you have the proper gear, it's not too bad. The cover on top has been good for us. That was from the Kubota dealership as well. We got that. Uh, it's been pretty stout. We've traveled this up and down the interstates from Mississippi to Tennessee and from Tennessee up to here multiple times. And this thing has never even attempted to fly off or anything like that. So I'm happy with that. Again, this little shield here in the back is really nice to keep some debris and stuff off you. But if you're in really dusty conditions, you're going to get dust and stuff back there. A plexiglass window back there would help to keep down the dust, but it's not necessary. Uh, I like this little flap right here, so especially when we put a whole lot of dirt and crap like that. It doesn't allow that dirt to fall in between the gap here. So a nice little design right there. The metal tailgate, or metal bed, excuse me, I like that. The tailgate, one thing, it is kind of irritating. You've got clips on both, I mean, you've got these little levers here on both sides. So technically, I can't even do this with the video. Uh, on my parents' John Deere, they have one in the middle. It's not a big deal, but at the same time, it is kind of annoying because if you have your hands full, you want to open the tailgate, you really can't do that without using putting down whatever you have, put it in the back there, and then use both hands to open it up the machine itself uh, again it has a low high neutral and reverse uh, really had no issue there when we're in the snow here I try to keep it in low gear because I don't want to go too fast and I didn't show it on the video but I ran into the dang fence over there because I was going too fast <laughs> but uh, that low gear is, is usually what I use whenever I'm uh, driving around in the snow on the roads I use the high gear and everything, and this is governed at 42 miles an hour. 42 miles an hour seems like it's quick. I wish the governor wasn't on there. Only because when I'm transiting between here and my neighbor's house, uh, we want to go a little bit quicker, and when you hit that governor, it's like, rah, rah, rah. it just sits there and, and pegs that gov governor. I'm, I'm going to see if we can even maybe remove that. And the only reason I say to remove it, I don't really want to go much faster than 42 miles an hour, but I just don't like when you're driving down the road and you just feel that, that governor kind of engaging. It's just, I don't like that. <laughs> That's just me, a, a personal thing. But again, 42 miles an hour is the top speed of this, which is quick. Don't get me wrong. That is quick. It's not like the diesel models that you only do, I think, 25 miles an hour. This thing will get up and go. And the acceleration on this is very good. It's, this thing has a ton of acceleration. Uh, you can easily let the tires loose on this thing it'll just get up and go so no no problems with acceleration torque i've done other videos with this we've towed out many of logs with this machine and she does great absolutely uh just a torque monster i believe it's it's essentially a 50 horsepower i think it's 48 or 49 horsepower two cylinder engine she's got plenty of power let's see what else can i say about her i mean it's been a good vehicle the lights are nice the fact that you have low beams and high beams is a really big plus uh, they're LED lights, so I do like that. The other day, I also knocked off this cap right here. Uh, I ran into something because I was sliding into it sideways. <laughs> Even though I have ran into things with this, you can't tell. <laughs> it's pretty stout. Uh, we, we're kind of rough on equipment and everything. Oh, one other good thing, as you saw, driving down the road on those trails and everything, if you noticed, 
it was bottoming out. So you could see where the ground was smoothed out. And that's because the entire body underneath here has a belly pan. I really do like how it has a belly pan underneath here. It keeps everything out. And uh, it also helps you just to slide over things. If you get over top of a, a big tree or something like that, you can kind of high center yourself, but you can also use it to your advantage. Get yourself high centered, you get off, you push it a little bit, get the front wheels when you're four-wheel drive, and she'll pull right off. So I like that. I don't have to worry about getting any branches, roots, or anything up into the underside of the engine. Maintenance on this thing is pretty easy as well. Really had no issues with that. I'll be doing a video here soon because I'll have to change the oil on this probably before spring and then um, go over that in a separate video. The fuel tank, one little pet peeve on the fuel tank. You have to, you don't have to, but really you should open up the, um, the tailgate here, the, the bed, lift it up to get to this fuel cap because the fuel cap itself, it is tucked in there and that's a good design, but you really can't get a gas can in there. It's best to lift this up and fill that way. Uh, it is very convenient that you have the air filter there as well. So maintenance on this thing has been pretty easy. Uh, starting, never really had an issue with starting. She'll start in cold weather. Just let her warm up a bit. But other than that, overall great machine. Very happy we made this purchase about two years ago. And she has been holding up very well for us. If you have any questions or comments about this, please post below in the comment section and I'll see if I can get back to you on that and I'll be looking forward to new videos with this machine coming out here soon because as soon as springtime starts you know we're gonna get out here do some more stuff on the farm but also get out there and take it out on some trails and such all right please like subscribe we'll see you around thanks